Hello everyone, welcome to Barca News. It is May 5th, 2023, and Barcelona have added one more name to the list of candidates to replace Matteo Alemani. Also, it seems like Sofian Amrabat is Xabi's chosen one for the pivot position. And finally, the club might have found a way to try to sign Juan Foyt come this summer. We have a lot to discuss, so let's begin. Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Mo and before we begin with the news, just a quick reminder to make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It goes a long way in helping this small and humble channel continue to grow. Also, if you are looking for any Barcelona jerseys or merchandise, make sure you hit the kit back. The link is down below in the description. Now, we'll begin with the news that La Liga's president, Javier Tebas, has clarified about why he has decided that Barcelona need to lower their wage bill by 200 million euros. Now, Javier Tebas has explained that when Barcelona activated all those economic levers that generated around 500 million euros for the club, in order for La Liga to accept the activation of these economic levers, Barcelona promised to generate 250 million euros in revenue. Now, if Barcelona cannot generate those 250 million euros in revenue, which is half of the 500 million that the economic levers generated, then the difference will be reduced from Barcelona's uh, wage limit. So in other words, if Barcelona only posts 100 million euros in revenues, the other 150 million euros in difference would have to be reduced from the salary limit. So that explains why Javier Tebas is insisting that Barcelona need to reduce their wage bill by 200 million euros because this is based on a promise that Barcelona made when they decided to activate the economic levers. Now on to the news that Barcelona now have a new candidate that they have added to the list of possible replacement for Matteo Alemani. Now, as I reported previously, Matteo Alemani will be leaving the club on June 30th, and Barcelona are considering several possible candidates to replace him, with the favorite one being the former Barcelona player Deco, and the other option being Bayer Leverkusen CEO, who is Fernando Carro. Now, Barcelona are now considering another option as a possible replacement for Matteo Alemani. And this new option is a former Barcelona goalkeeper named Vitor Bahia, who's currently the vice president of the Portuguese club Porto. Now, Vitor Bahia has an impressive resume with not only experience as the CEO of Porto, but also plenty of experience as a football manager. And he is the right-hand man of Porto's president, Pinto de Costa. And together, when they took over Porto, Porto was under the UEFA financial fair play re, uh, rule news, just like Barcelona are currently under the financial fair play rule news of La Liga. And, and as a, a result, Porto were not allowed to sign any players. But despite these financial fair play rule restrictions, both Pinto de Costa and Vitor Bahia were able to make some miraculous signings and keep the team performing. And in fact, they were able to win the Portuguese league in two years. Now, Vitor Bahia and Pinto de Costa were also able to recover the club financially. And after two years with positive, uh, with positive balance sheet, they are now a healthy financial club. And they are no longer under financial fair play rule restrictions that UEFA had imposed on them. Now, Barcelona are seriously considering Vitor Bahia, given his impressive resume and what he was able to do at Porto. Because that's exactly what Barcelona are going through with the financial fair play rule restrictions that are not allowing them to sign the players that they want and of course the financial crisis that the club are currently going uh, going through and if Vitor Bahia was able to correct all, uh, the same circumstances that Porto were facing then maybe he could help Barcelona correct their own problems. Now Barcelona are considering Vitor Bahia as uh, someone to work alongside with Deco because Barcelona want two people to replace Matteo Alemani because as I reported in yesterday's video, Alemani was not, uh, is not just a football director who's in charge of signing and offloading players. He also has some CEO-like duties where he's also in charge of balancing the books and making sure that the club are um, adhering to the financial fair play rules. Now, given that Deco is a football agent, a former football player, his, his expertise more lays in signing and offloading players. So Barcelona want to bring someone else who could also be able to do the CEO duties that Alemani is also doing. And initially, Barcelona were considering that Jordi Cruyff could be that person alongside Deco. But since Jordi Cruyff is still deciding his future, Barcelona are planning in the head and considering Victor Bahia to work in that role alongside Deco. Now, speaking of Matteo Alemani and Jordi Cruyff, 
I do want to touch on one thing before moving on to the next news segment, and that is that on, in Wednesday's live stream, I spoke about the, uh, why Alemani wanted to leave in the summer and why Jordi Cuev was considering leaving as well, and that's their disagreements with Gian Laporta about the direction of the sporting project. Now, I said that for the first time since Gian Laporta has been elected, I felt a little bit unsettled about what was going on in the club. And unfortunately, many people took that to mean that Jean Laporta was a horrible president and that Barcelona are going down the wrong path. Uh, the wrong path. Now, the Madrid-based media have also pounced on this opportunity, talking about how Jean Laporta is a terrible president and the worst president that Barcelona has ever had. And that is why his board of directors are quitting on him. Now, I do want to make one thing clear, and that is that the real mastermind behind this whole operation, the real genius and the real person who's responsible for Barcelona's success is not Matteo Alemani, it's not Jordi Cruyff, it's Jean Laporta. Now, when Jean Laporta became president during his first term in 2003, uh, he, he had several board of, members of board of directors resign, such as Sandro Rosé. And just like today, back then the media also said that Jean Laporta was the worst president and that that is why his board of directors were quitting on him. But see, Jean Laporta became president during a very difficult time in the history of Barcelona. And not only was he able to rebuild the club and put Barcelona back on successful path, both economically speaking and sporting wise, but he was also able to build the best Barcelona squad in the history of the club and one of the best squads in the history of football, which later became known as the golden era of Barcelona. Now, Jean Laporta was able to achieve this by giving the opportunity to an inexperienced coach who had only coached the third division in Spain named Pep Guardiola, and by allowing Pep Guardiola and giving him the leeway to promote young inexperienced players from La Masia, such as Leo Messi. Now, forward 15 years later, and Jean Laporta has once again taken over the reins of the club during, during one of the darkest periods of Bar in Barcelona's history and once again he's rebuilding Barcelona and putting Barcelona back on a path of success and despite all the problems that Barcelona are currently facing the club has just won the Spanish Super Cup and are about to win La Liga title something that was not expected to happen for another five years but yet, history is repeating itself once again with the media saying that Laporta is a bad president because his board of directors are quitting and that he's a bad president for giving the opportunity or trusting an inexperienced coach named Xabi Hernandez. But as I said before, I want to I wanna make it very clear to everyone, the real mastermind behind Barcelona's success is not Alemani or Cruyff, it's Jean Laporta. He's the one who rebuilt Barcelona. He's the one who built the best Barcelona squad in the history, and he did it without Matteo Alemani and without Jordi Cruyff, and I have no doubt that he will do it once again, and I don't say this because I like the guy or because I have a good feeling about him. I'm saying this because he has the track record to prove it, so there's no reason to doubt Jan Laporta. Now, of course, I'm not trying to take away from what Alemani and Cruyff have done for the club. They have been instrumental in Jan Laporta's plans, but nonetheless, just because they are quitting, it doesn't mean that Barcelona is going to fall apart and that Jean Laporta is the worst president uh, in the history of the club. Jean Laporta has rebuilt Barcelona before without Alemania and without Cruyff, and I have no doubt that he's going to do it once again. Now, on to the news that it seems that Sofiane Amrabah is the chosen pivot for Xabi Hernandez. Now, Sofiane Amrabah is a 26-year-old pivot who currently plays for Fiorentina and whose contract is up in the summer of 2024. And Barcelona attempted to sign him during the winter transfer market, but unfortunately, La Liga informed Barcelona that they didn't have enough space on their wage bill. And as such, that signing fell through during the final moments of the market. Now, Barcelona told Sofiane Amrabat that they will sign him come this summer and the player is crazy about coming to Barcelona. However, that operation was placed on hold for the longest time because Barcelona did not know uh, which uh, what player they're going to sign for the pivot position. And it seems that Xavi has now personally requested from the club that they make a huge effort to try to bring Sofiane Amrabat because Xavi thinks he would be the perfect replacement for Sergio Busquets. Now, Xavi considers that Sofiane Amrabat is the perfect profile for the Barcelona pivot, where he is physically strong, really good with the ball, really good with the distribution with the ball, not afraid to hold the ball, and is also really good without the ball as well. And Xavi wants to have the Moroccan player on his squad, 
But of course, all of this will depend about um, on how much money Fiorentina will ask for their player. Now, Sofiane Amrabat's current market value is 25 million euros, but of course, he will have one year, only one year left on his contract come this summer. So this gives Barcelona a little bit more leeway to negotiate that price down. And of course, the player is dying to come to Barcelona and is willing to pressure or force his way out. So that could also help the club in negotiating his price down. So we're going to have to see how much the City uh, club is going to ask for their midfielder. Now, speaking of midfielders, it's reported that Jorge Mendes has offered Ruben Neves plus 30 million euros for Ansu Fati in a swap deal between Barcelona and Wolverhampton. Now, Jorge Mendes represents both Ansu Fati and Ruben Neves, and for the longest time, he's been trying to bring Ruben Neves to the club. But Xavi has not greenlighted this operation because he doesn't think that Ruben Neves will be the right fit for that pivot position. Now, to add to all of this, Jorge Mendes has also been trying to find a new destination for Ansu Fati, and it seems that he is trying to hit two birds with one stone by taking Ansu Fati to the Premier League and bringing Ruben Neves to Barcelona. Now, it seems that Jorge Mendes met with Ansu Fati's entourage and explained to them this, uh, this operation. And he also explained that even though Wolverhampton would be a step, uh, step down from Barcelona, that he thinks it would be a good stepping stone for Ansu Fati in the Premier League where he can prove himself and later on get transferred to a bigger club. Now it seems that Ansu Fati's entourage outright rejected this idea and that is why Bodhi Fati said that Ansu was staying in Barcelona after he was seen leaving the meeting between Jorge Mendes and the board of directors. And even though Barcelona, our uh, official stance is that Ansu Fati will be staying at the club, it's reported that Barcelona will be talking with Ansu Fati once they wrap up La Liga title to see what's going to happen with the future of the player. Now, as I've said many times before, if Barcelona do receive a lucrative offer for Ansu Fati, then they're definitely going to consider offloading him because Barcelona need to offload several players this summer in order to reduce their wage bill. Now on to the news that Barcelona might have found the formula to try to sign Xabi's favorite option for the right back position, the Argentinian Juan Foyt from Villarreal. Now Barcelona, as reported previously, have decided to send Pablo Torre out on loan in the summer because they want him to get more minutes in the first division so he can continue growing and developing and Villarreal have been keen on taking Pablo Torre on loan. Now there's another player that Villarreal would like to have and that is Nico Gonzalez who Barcelona no longer count on him given his failed performance at Barcelona and his failed loan at Valencia and as such it seems that Barcelona are willing to offload Nico to uh, Villarreal, send Pablo Torre on loan to Villarreal and get some money as well and all of that might help, bring, uh, might help Barcelona bring Juan Foyth to uh, the club per Xabi's request because he is the number one option for Xabi to fulfill that right back position. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a like. Also, I would like to invite all of you to please leave a comment down below giving me all your thoughts and opinions about all the news that I share with you. And finally, I would like to invite all of you to please subscribe to the channel so you can stay current on all the latest news in regards to our beloved club. FC Barcelona. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video and as always, Peace Cabarsa.